this is your stat sensei, Mr. Spensei, and we're going to go over the pre-quiz. So patients with heart attack symptoms arrive in an emergency room either by ambulance or self-transportation provided by themselves, family, or friends. Oh, incidentally, you need to make sure you write this down on a separate sheet of paper and you will turn this in on Wednesday. So make sure you write all this, uh, write down uh, the solution parts and turn this in on Wednesday. When a patient arrives at the emergency room, the uh, time of arrival is recorded. Uh, the time when the patient's uh, diagnostic treatment is also recorded. An administrator of a large hospital wants to determine whether the mean wait time between arrival and diagnostic for patients with heart attack symptoms differs according to the way that they were uh, uh, um, delivered. For each patient, the mode of transportation and wait time are recorded. Summary statistics for each mode of transportation are shown in the table below. Uh, so we see that on average, it takes uh, six minutes by ambulance to be seen and eight and a half minutes to be seen um, if delivered by self. We had 77 delivered by ambulance, 73 de delivered by self. And we these are our standard deviations, 4.3 for the ambulance and 5.16. We read on. Use a 99% confidence interval to estimate the difference between the mean wait times for ambulance transported and self-transported patients at the emergency room. So our very first thing we have to do, and we can look at, our, and you need to be looking at your formula charts, um, your recipe cards, let mu equal the true population mean wait time when delivered by ambulance. And let mu2 equal the true population mean wait time when transported by self. Random sample actually was not given. We will try not to do that to you again, but random sample was not given for both, but since it's my mistake, random sample given for both. N equals 77, which is greater than 30, so normal by central limit theorem, and N equals 73, which is greater than 30, so also normal by central limit theorem. We wrote down our formula, X bar one minus X bar two plus or minus T star the square root of S1 squared over N1, S2 squared over N2. And then we started recording the information that we had. Well, the information we have is 6.4 and then 8.3, 6.4 and 8.3. And over here, we had 4.3 and 5.6 for our standard deviations. We had sample sizes of 77 and 73 and we had a 99% confidence level. The big thing here is I have to get my T star. So the way to get my T star is to go ahead and run a test. And I really don't care if you run number four or number zero. I'm going to run zero because that's the, the one that I were working with, which is, and I have my information in L1 and L2, and I should show you that. Actually, I don't for this one. I do for the next one. So stats, I need to go ahead and put my information in. Um, X1, 6.04. SX, 4.3. N1, 77. 8.3 for X2. 5.16. The standard deviation, a sample size is 73. Oops, not 733, 73. The confidence level of 99, and we never pool. When we calculate, we're going to get a couple of important pieces of information. Uh, I obviously have a typo somewhere, so let me go back into that. Um, stat test, zero. Yep, 6.04. There we go. That looks a little, looking a little much better. And so we have our, we actually have our interval. We can write that down on number nine right now, negative 4.291 and negative 0.292291. The other thing I need to notice is I need my degrees of freedom, which it gives me to right here, 140.3717. And with that, I can now get my T star. So to get my T star, second vars, Inverse T, 1 minus 0.99 divided by 2, 
degrees of freedom. There's that 140.3717 I needed. And I get a T star of 2.6113. At this point, I can go ahead and start plugging all that information into my formula. And sure enough, there's 6.04, 8.3. There's our 2.6113 for our T star value. My standard deviation of 4.3 over the sample size of 77 plus 5.16 squared over a sample size of 73. And as noted before, we we got this value by going stat test. This is how we got our interval. We dropped all the way down to number zero, which is a two sample inter T interval. And we put all our information in. Make, and we had 99% and we made sure we weren't pooling. And there it is. And not only that, you can go back and you should go back to check that you have all these values correctly entered. All right. So that takes care of that. So now we are on to our conclusion. And our conclusion is we are 99% confident that the true population difference of means. So we may need to make sure that we have difference of means in wait times, ambulance minus self, I have to say which way it's subtracted, lies within our interval, and this is our interval. In repeated sampling, we expect this method to capture the true population difference of means in wait times, ambulance minus self, 99% of the time. Now, when we're doing the confidence interval, we have to have the difference of means. When we're doing the hypothesis test, which we'll do just in a moment, you'll see that we don't need to have that. All right, so moving on to the hypothesis test. So a large pet store buys the, uh, di the identical fish or tropical from two different suppliers, buy right pets and fish friends. Several of the managers of the pet store suspect that the links from fish friends are consistently greater than the links of the fish friends from buy right pets. Um, random samples of eight adult, hey, there we go. There's the word we're looking for, random samples of eight adult fish from buy right pets and 10 adult fish of the same species from fish friends were selected and the links of the fish in inches were recorded as shown in the table. The fish links are, hey, normally distributed. That's going to be important because our sample sizes are less than 30. Do the data provide convincing evidence that the mean length of adult fish of species from fish friends is greater than the mean length from fish friends uh, from by right pets? Test at a 5% significance level. So, a couple things. First off, I entered this data in the L1 and L2. Let me see if I can adjust the brightness here. Wrong way, that looked horrible. That's not great, but hopefully that's a little better. So um, I can check these. I can go uh, stat calc, one var stat, and checks L1. And I have 3.4, and there's my standard deviation of 4.34. So I know I have them right. The reason I'm here, though, the main reason is because it's like, well, technically, you don't even have to go there, is this summation of X. So if I see this, and I see 27.2, that just means if I added all these values up, they're going to equal 27.2. And we probably will start using that as a check figure and may do that on the quiz. So make sure you know that when you see that summation sign right here, that little summation sign, the summation of X equals 27.2. That means that when you add the values up, it should equal 27.2. If I go to check the other list, stat, calc, one var stats, and I drop down to L2, I have that 3.46. I also have the 0 0.550. So that's all looking good. But once again, they're probably going to start giving you summation of X, which in this case is 34.6. And that means this value plus this value plus this value. If you add those values up, it should equal 34.6. So if I give you a summation of 34.6 or that uh, symbol, just check that. You should be good. 
So here we go. So HO, mu B equals, or MB equals MF. So mu B equals MF, that's, and I could have done mu one and mu two, but I was like, you know what, let's mu of by right pets equals mu of fish friends. Mu of by right pets is less than mu of fish friends. In other words, mu of fish friends is greater than mu of by right pets. I need to go ahead and define them. And again, if you did mu one and mu two, that's fine. Let mu b equal the true population fish length from by right pets. Let mu f equal the true population fish fish length from fish friends. Random samples were both were given. Fish lengths were normal, and that were also given. So that was here's our normal, and here's our random random samples for both of them, and the fish lengths are normally distributed. So. I did not have to write fish links. I could have just said normal distributions for both, and that would be fine. But I need to make sure I address it. So we have x bar 1 minus x bar 2, s1 squared over n1 plus s2 squared over n2, etc. So I've entered that data in the calculator, and I can go stat, test, drop down to number 4, two sample t-test, make sure data is highlighted. Oops. Stat, test, number 4. Make sure data is highlighted. And I have L1 and L2. This inequality needs to match what's up here. So I have a less than there, so I need a less than there. We never pool. And now I have my X bar 1, 3.4, X bar 2, 3.46. I have 0.4342 and I have 0.5501. We have sample sizes of eight and 10. So I'll record all that information. And which direction am I shading? Well, this is pointing to the left, so I'm shading to the left. I plug those values into my formula. There's X bar one, there's X bar two. Uh, standard deviation one, standard deviation two, sample size one, sample size two. Looking back up at my screen, I see that I have a T star of negative 0.2585 and a P value of 0.3996. That's a pretty big P value. And sure enough, 0.3996 is greater than the alpha of 0.05 that they gave us. So our decision is to fail to reject the null. Our P value is 0.3996. We fail to reject the null. There is not sufficient evidence at alpha equal 0.05 to suggest the true population mean fish length of by right pets is less than that of fish friends. So that the true population mean fish length from where? From by right pets is less than from fish friends. All right. So real. If you notice in here, we do not talk about the uh, difference of the means. We have to do that with the um, confidence interval, but not with the hypothesis test. I hope this helps, and I sure hope I'm back to see you all on Wednesday. Uh, see you on the next one. Thank you.